How's it going YouTube? This is gonna be a walkthrough of probably the cheapest pedal drive kayak you can get right now. I paid $649 for this from West Marine. It was on sale, uh, clearance. But normally they're $999 everyday normal price on Amazon.com or Walmart.com. And uh, so far it's been a pretty solid kayak. I've used it inshore fishing uh, quite a bit. I've used it for night fishing at Three Mile Bridge in Pensacola. I've used it offshore, including in some pretty sporty conditions offshore. And uh, water kind of washes over it. It does get very wet, but never take a drop of water inside the kayak and uh, never felt like it was gonna flip, never felt any stability issues with it, no matter how bad the chop and the surf was. So. That's better than a lot of kayaks. Um, it's a Pelican Getaway uh, pedal drive, has the high drive two drive that they make, which is right there. It's basically um, a simple but very effective uh, pedal drive. Doesn't have a uh, reverse, it's just forward only. Um, haven't had any issues at all with the drive. And uh, 10 and a half feet long weighs 59 pounds and it is 33 inches wide which is kind of surprising it's that narrow being that it's supposed to be a stand-up paddleboard kayak hybrid um, I do stand on it when I fish inshore but it's definitely not the most stable feeling when you're standing um, sitting down zero issues at all standing I was able to fish but it's definitely not the most confidence inspiring if I was to, you know, I've caught a small fish, uh, some speckled trout, normal size. Um, haven't caught any like bull reds or anything standing and not sure if I'd be able to fight them all that if I was standing on this. But um, I have fought some big bull reds while I was sitting and no issues, never felt anything uncomfortable. But um, these, when you buy these, they are not rigged for fishing at all. No rod holders, nothing like that. Cause it's just a, uh, not made for that but very very easy to convert and you really don't have to convert it all that much um i have uh i added two rod holders to it i'm actually going to put some flush mounts in but i needed to get it rigged up and uh these are the only rod holders i can find locally uh walmart 11 dollars each normal price and you just drill a hole drill the hole that size right there put marine goop and uh Plop them in and the rod holders lift up and you can turn them to whichever way you want if you don't have rod blocking it. And, uh, yeah, you can adjust whichever way they go, holds it. Um, in shore, I almost always only bring two rods and reels. It's just a pen class uh, 2500 is one and then a uh, Cast King Sharky. Um, 1,000 to my other one, and then uh, just a Black Hawk rod. Nothing fancy. I definitely don't really care about what gear I use as long as the gear works and it can survive salt water. That's my only concerns. I don't care about the brand names. I just want good quality, inexpensive gear that can survive salt water. And uh, so far, the Pen Clash um, it's definitely survived, and so has the uh, Casking Sharky. That's uh, two years of use uh, fishing don't take any special care of never taking it apart still smooth great little reel completely has nothing to do with the kayak but it is solid uh, the rudder on this thing does not self retract if you want to lift it up you have to come over here flop it there's a little bungee that holds it closed um, I am gonna mod it and just put a pull strap to do it but for now I just take that off when I go to launch, flip that, it'll sit like this or whatever on the ground, not a big deal. Drag it into water, and once it gets deep enough, it just falls all the way down. Um, good thing about it is you don't have to really worry about breaking it. If you run into stuff with it, it just pops up, you know, it's out of the way. Um, it does give you very good turning. And you can see how far that, you know, it goes very sharp turn so rudder works very good it does have good turning performance 
um, bungee. I just, I literally put two rod holders, put a milk crate in the back. I don't take very much from my fish because I know it works for me and I don't really use stuff that I don't know it works already. Um, I put one tackle tray full of uh, soft plastics and some different swim baits and hard baits and stuff like that. A couple top waters, a uh, water jug and uh, a little plastic box that has random stuff in my need leader and stuff like that. Um, the only time this gets used is for beach launches. This kayak's so light that pretty much everywhere we launch from for inshore, I just pick it up and take it to the water's edge by hand, set it down, then I throw all my stuff in it. Um, but the sea tug does work good for uh, beach launches on it. Uh, they're not the greatest, that's the sand wheels. Um, they're not the greatest with the heavy kayak launching through the really fine sand we have here in uh, Pensacola and Navarre area of Florida. But it's, uh, with this kayak being so light, it has no issues at all. Uh, this is the uh, paddle holder. Definitely kind of in the way. I don't use it. As you can see, I just have my paddle in half, slide it up here. It's out of the way, easy enough to land fish not in the way i can still stand up and then if i need to use the paddle for whatever reason let's put it together real quick and use it or what i do most of the time is i just grab half of it paddle do whatever paddling i need to do and then throw it back in there uh, the cup holder i just set my braid scissors in there and i put uh pliers and fish grip on my pliers I just got looped around the seat and strapped together and just kind of toss them there. That way, whenever I need you know, unhook a fish, grab a fish, we have a lot of fish here with sharp teeth. So fish grips and uh, pliers. The uh, seat is about as basic as you get for a lawn chair style seat, but it is pretty comfortable. Don't really have any issues with it. No complaints. Um, keeps you high enough off the, that you don't get wet there is no other adjustments other than how far back the seat leans so definitely not all that fancy uh, drive well is one of the replaceable type uh, zero issues at all the drive haven't had any issues with it works fine I do take off the little foot straps because I don't use them and uh, yeah drives completely fine take it out just pop these little uh, pins right here. Let's go forward and forward. And that just lifts up. Put it in. Same way. Drop it in. Flip them back. And it's locked in. They don't go anywhere. Uh, this little fish bag here is about as kind of ghetto as you get. It was a windshield sunscreen visor thing or whatever to keep sun out of your car i passed it off to my buddy he stitched it up sewed a zipper on it stitched up the ends on it put a marine goop and this thing doesn't leak it's two layers thick and it um kept ice last this last sunday it kept ice for five hours with no issues at all so very effective for what it is and I have an actual fish bag, but I don't really use it. This one, because it has like fabric covering it, hooks get stuck on it. It's just more annoyance than it's worth. This thing right here is as simple as you get. Costs a couple bucks and uh, it is solid. Uh, the Pelican doesn't have a strap on the front when you buy it. This is just a little bungee on one side with a adjustable buckle. And uh, I keep about that tight because when this bag's full of ice and you fill it with fish, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, easy enough, the kayak's stable that you can get out of the seat, go forward, put fish in there, no problem. Uh, makes it about as simple as you get. And uh, the whole entire thing's still lighter with all my stuff on it. Rods, reels, all that good stuff. My kayak tray and everything. This is probably lighter than just the whole of most Hobies, except for the Lynx. But Lynx is like $3,300. So basically a, a budget version of a Hobie Lynx. Um, the uh, hole on this thing is probably the weirdest hole shape I've ever seen. The, uh, 
the front has the normal style that you know kind of everybody's used to on a lot of kayaks nothing fancy this is just a piece of tape i never took off and uh yeah more tape i kind of ran this thing since i bought it and uh i was fishing in it the next day but uh see how this goes like this then it shoots up not quite sure why it goes up into this narrow pretty skinny little area and then it tapers back down and then it starts going back up again um the rear half of it is a tunnel hole style and uh let me get this rudder out of the way see how it kind of you know mini little uh tunnel hole so not bad uh it works uh really weird kind of annoying if you're gonna car top it getting it onto your uh roof rack bars and everything with that with the weird shape it has but um it's easy to throw it in a truck and just literally it's 59 pounds pick it up and toss it in the truck done yeah, well a couple straps and then you're done but you know what i mean and uh yeah it's uh cheap very very budget kayak but uh it gets the job done i'm using it for inshore I have a stealth Fisher 555 where my name came from. It's a 18 and a half foot long composite kayak, 27 inches wide, weighs 50 something pounds. Um, best offshore kayak you can probably get, but a little overkill for inshore and also a little uh, annoying to load and unload being that it's 18 and a half feet long. But, um, so looking for an inshore kayak and, uh, kind of can't beat the deal on this thing. It is this cheap, cheap, cheap. And, uh, like it hasn't had any issues with it. It's, uh, I went out in some really rough conditions offshore and it never made it feel like I was going to flip. Never had any scares. So I've hauled up a whole lot of fish with it including some uh 40 inch plus bull reds and uh yeah easy mode kayak makes everything pretty simple i've had a hobie compass i've had five shear waters i've had a lot of uh kayaks in the last five years and this is actually one of the few that i plan on keeping just it's so convenient light easy to use kind of can't beat that combination when it goes for uh, simple fishing. It is not as fast as uh, my buddies, uh, my main two fishing buddies both use Hobie Outbacks and uh, definitely not as fast as them, but I can definitely keep up with them as far as regular, you know, us moving around from spot to spot or going wherever. I had no issues keeping up with them, but if we try to race, I'd lose. Um, cruising three miles an hour, no issues. Um, that's basically all we do anyway, so you know, I'm not trying to get in a race. It's only 10 and a half feet long, so uh, can't really expect more than what it can do. But for being its size that it is, it is surprisingly quick, surprisingly agile. Uh, tracking is not its best thing. And uh, if you have waves coming from behind, when I was offshore and it was pretty sporty, uh, any following sea, and uh, it lets you know it wasn't happy and have to kind of zigzag to make my way forward just to you know keep it feeling good but yeah no issues uh i like it i enjoy it I, if you have the budget you know for a hobie lynx then i heard those things are awesome i've never used one but uh for about a thousand bucks or if you catch it on sale like i did and get it for 650 then uh this thing is a no-brainer it's it's just easy mode can't can be beat like two 11 rod holders a milk crate that was given to me and uh, a paddle that i use for my stealth which is uh, by the way these are extremely good paddles this one's uh had a rough life uh, lots of paddling on it but uh, um yeah if there's any questions or you know you want to know anything more specific about it or any just general 
info you need, feel free to put it in the comments and I will uh, respond. All right. Well, y'all have a good day. Thanks.